Hi, Bud here again with Simple Frugal Living. I'm out the country today, as you can see. Came out to do some work. Miss Linda's not with me today. So, any bad camera work you see is purely on me today. It's not her. What I'm going to do is shoot a little video today and tell you a little bit about us and give you a little closer look at the place. We are not, I repeat, we are not preppers. We are not homesteaders. We are not survivalists. We are not in any kind of militia. We are two old people working on retirement and we're living on a very limited fixed income off Social Security. And our fixed income off Social Security for both of us is less than what the newspaper says the average Social Security is for one person. So we're doing the very best we can. We're in the workshop right now. Show you the workshop. It's a little metal building I bought out of savings. And, well, it's not that little. It's 14 feet wide, 33 feet long. And as you can see, it's cluttered and clumbered up and nasty because we've got about a half a dozen different projects going. And I have not had a day to come out here and clean the shop and reorganize and straighten everything up. We just came out here to show you the lights are on. If we look real close here on this circuit breaker box, this breaks, brings panel electric from the house out here, and both of these breakers are turned off. And instead, we have two cords coming around here plugged into our 3,000 watt inverter, which as you can see, our battery's got 12.8 volts in them right now. That's what's powering the lights and everything else in this shop. Our charge controller is up here. I don't know if you can see it or not, but... On a cloudy, rainy day, we're getting 11 watts of electricity off our solar panels, and these are older solar panels. I've had them for about four years. There's our two batteries. They're deep cycle. Those are from Walmart. They cost about $100 a piece. We've got two bigger batteries that are from Renergy that are 200 amp hours. Those are going to be coming out here, and they're going to be going where these are, and these are going to be going down and underneath. And we'll hook both batteries up to a bus bar up here and put a double throw double pole switch on it so we can go from one battery bank to the other so that we don't run out of power so we are running the shop completely off grid and we have had several days where I have gone in the house shut the power off in the house turned two circuits on in the house and flipped these up and then back fed panel electric through these back into the house and actually fed the house and we actually ran the house in the shop for three days during the daytime without any problems. So we know we can do it. You don't have to have six or eight thousand dollar solar system go off grid. You need to change your lifestyle. As you can see, we have two solar panels up there. They're 300 watt. And between those, the charge controller, the batteries, and the inverter, we probably have less than a thousand dollars in this setup and then out here you can see our backyard which is of course a mess we haven't had the backyard done yet it needs to be leveled and filled in way back over there in the corner you can see the new holding tank we put in that was the only utility related item we needed to do was put in a new holding tank where this white paper is at right here cardboard's at was a there was originally a still holding tank in there but it was collapsed and we had to clean that all out and then we put the new one in. We had a gas company bring a gas bottle out and set in because we do use LP. And underneath this little door here in our skirting that we have that raises up, we can raise up and show you our big Renergy solar batteries. These are 200 amp hour, 12 volts. <laughs> Those are slightly more expensive. And they're on the solar system that's in the house. And in that system, we've probably got about $2,000 all total. And that includes the solar panels, those batteries, charge controller, some wiring, the windmill, and the charge controller for the windmill. So we've probably got less than $3,000 in all of our alternate energy. And you can see the windmill is moving a little. It's probably not doing much good right now, but it is moving. And the solar panels are right there next to it, right up there on the top. <clears throat> this is a porch we just recently put in 
the bottom part has got lattice and behind the lattice is four mil clear warps plastic and then on top we're going to screen the top end build the screen door for here and then we'll have panels mounted above that that'll fold down that'll be covered with the uh, clear plastic in order to close it off during fall and winter and make it a little more usable as you can see here we did do a little detail work on a deck when we built our deck all the rails are dovetailed into the post so that we won't be getting any rails pulling apart as they shrivel up everything will stay locked together we put a roof on it with metal roofing and we will be insulating that roof and putting something on the bottom of it I haven't decided what yet because we do want to use this space at least three seasons of the year I've got plenty of room down there I might put some of my exercise equipment down there because I don't have anywhere in the house to put it this house is smaller than the one we're living in now this trailer I should say it's smaller than the one we're living in now as you come in off to the right this is what's going to be the sewing room office over there in that between that bathroom wall and that outside wall we're going to be putting two white cape big white cases that will hold tubs full of plastic and knitting and crochet and stuff and embroidery stuff in front of those windows will be a six foot long sewing table that three sewing machines will set on there'll be a plastic shelf set over here in this corner with the printers on it and then the desk will set in front of this window and in order to eliminate one storage unit because we have two storage two shelving units in our office right now we had to eliminate one of those so in order to eliminate one of those i'm building shelves in the closet here we've got our paper over here and i'm putting some binders and stuff over on this side and we can eliminate that one storage unit and in the center of the floor we're going to be putting a cutting island for cutting fabric and stuff and then we have a small half bath in here we call it a half bath because it's got a tub and a toilet and no sink but it works it functions we did replace all the plumbing and underneath the trailer the supply lines as well as the waste lines this is our living area you can see our little heater sitting over there it's burning right now with its blue propane flame got a little bit of work to do in here yet i've got to get the walls finished off and painted we did do have all the new flooring in we put new subfloor throughout the whole trailer uh three quarter inch tongue groove osb and then we put new laminate floor covering on we have a breakfast bar here that connects into the lid into the kitchen kitchen we have a 30 by 48 foot or 30 by 48 inch island in the middle uh it's got we're going to put doors on the lower part and under and behind the doors or you can see the drawer slides we'll be putting pull out drawers in there we've also got a unit here we're building and we got two units over here on the outside wall these units up here were built by my helper who was with me for until about three weeks ago i had to let him go because we ran out of savings uh those are the drop down cabinets uh that cabinet will be faced just like that cabinet is and you won't be able to open the cabinet what happens is that linear activator up there is activated by 12 volts and a switch over on the that's going to be down on the end island there and this drops down so that this top shelf is completely below it and my wife will be able to get to both of the shelves without any problem my wife's only five feet tall and she's never been able to get to top shelves and we got a thing here that we're going to be using for storage this is our alcove where the toaster oven and microwave will be setting and we have some shelving above that some shelving down below that we're also going to be putting drawers in and of course the stove and refrigerator everybody needs one of those and this is another one of those drop down cabinets here too in this wall here we're going to be building a opening that hole up in that wall and building a spice cabinet into the framing of the wall fortunately it's a thick wall so i'll be able to get some stuff in there and we have a day pantry just around the corner from the kitchen and then in this room we have a our storage pantry this room is going to be completely covered with that foil faced 
insulation because we want it cool and dark. The only light that will be in this room, that light's not hooked up. The only light that's going to be in this room is one of our solar motion activated lights. And we have, be putting more food storage item, can storage there. We got a shelf here with storage in it. And then in the closet unit, we have shelving for canned goods, home canned goods. Because my wife does do some home canning. Like I said, we're not preppers. But I don't believe the country's ahead or in a real good place. So I just want to be a little bit ahead on stuff. This is our bathroom. Area back there for a washer and dryer. That big thing mounted on the wall there is our propane on-demand water heater. Love those things. On-demand is so much cheaper to use. Saves you a lot of money. And then, of course, this is our bedroom, the only bedroom in the house. We have our old dresser in there. Fits nicely in that little alcove right there. And then we'll be putting the bed in here, and I'll be reconfiguring that whole closet there because I don't like the way it's laid out. So that's basically what we're doing, and we're not wealthy. We, Like I said, we had to let our handyman go because our savings was gone. We had a little bit of savings when we started this project, and it's gone now. So now we're finishing up and doing the best we can with what we got to work with. That's pretty much our catchphrase. We do the best we can with what we got to work with. We ain't rich people. We ain't using the, no buzzwords to get a lot of YouTube views. Matter of fact, we got like 17 subscribers. We're not trying to monetize this channel. And all those people that are using the word homestead, read the Homestead Act of 1862 signed by Lincoln and tell me you're a homesteader. Go out and find a bare piece of ground, dig a well by hand, build a house without anything to work with. Keep in mind a lot of those houses were built in the prairie. There weren't even any trees. That's why they had to build sod houses. So a lot of these people using the word homestead, they're not homesteaders. They're hobby farmers who are trying to get you YouTube viewers to pay for their hobby farms and all the new equipment you see them showing up with week after week. That's all they are. We're not that. We're just two retired people trying to do the best we can with what we got to live with. And we're trying to give some other people some ideas about what they can do. We don't have a lot of money. Like I said, we bought the property for $800 at our tax sale. Don't tell me as a homesteader you're going to go out and spend $38,000 for a piece of property. Homesteaders didn't do that. You want a piece of property? Check with your county government about a tax sale. Or find a county you want to be in and check with them about a tax sale. That's what we did. We lived in St. Louis. We came to this area of Missouri a lot for vacations and holidays and weekends and stuff. And we decided we wanted to be down here, so we contacted the courthouse and found out when the tax sale was. And lo and behold, we showed up at the tax sale. We had gone through the list of properties at the tax sale. We had five of them on our list we wanted to look at. And it came down to two properties left, this one and one other one. And we had a chance to snag this one for $800, so we snagged it. And then later on, while we were living here working on this, we decided it's stress was getting a little much on the wife so we bought a house in town uh it's also a trailer and it's on four tenths of an acre we bought that right because it was a man who had died and it was being sold by the estate we bought it very cheaply did a little bit of work on it it's fixed up now and now we've actually got it up for sale so we'll be moving back out here soon at any rate we just want to touch base with you all and let you know who we are and what we're doing God bless. Stay safe. We'll see you on the next one. Have a good one.